Hello my friends, viewers and followers. As you can see, I'm still at the cottage and still enjoying my little vacation, swimming in the lake and the beach. And so today we're going to have another episode of Philotia Introduction to the Devout Life by Francis of Sales. And you can check out, there's a playlist, Philotia it's called, and you can watch the other episodes if you have not watched them yet. So today we're going to start with chapter 5. The first step, purifying your soul. The flowers have appeared in our land, says the Divine Spouse, Canticle 2.12, and the time for pruning is come. What, my daughter, are the flowers of our heart but good desires? Therefore, so soon as they appear, we need to the sickle which shall prune away from our conscience all the dead works and superfluities. Before the captive maiden might be espoused to the Israelite, she was obliged to shave her head and pare her nails and put the raiment of her captivity from her of Deuteron Deuteronomy 21.12. And so the soul which aspires to be the bride of Christ must put off the old man and forsaking sin, be clothed with a new man, paring and shaving away all hindrances which come between it and the love of God. Such a purging of our corruption is the foundation of future health. St. Paul was purged with a perfect purification in a moment, as were St. Mary Magdalene, St. Catherine of Genova, St. Pelagia, and some others, but such purifications are miracles of grace, and even as the resurrection of the dead was a miracle in nature, and we dare not aspire to such. So some people, they're purified in an instant. So St. Paul, for example, Christ came to him. Uh, St. Paul actually wanted to persecute other Christians. His name was Saul back then. And Jesus came to him uh, in a vision, but really, I mean, Paul saw him come to him and he was riding on a horse and he was so startled by the light that he fell from his horse and he was blinded. So, and he heard actually the voice and his companions heard that voice too. Jesus asked him, Paul, why are you persecuting me? Why are you persecuting me? Because all the Christians, each one is a representative of Christ, is him himself. So Paul was so startled and he was blind and it just changed his entire life in an instant. And he turned around and he is one of the greatest saints uh, of all times. He wrote most of the New Testament in the Bible. It was St. Paul, actually. So, but we cannot expect that change will come in an instant as that. For most people, for most people, it will come gradually. So, we need to go step by step by step by step to become better. With the grace of God, not on our own, because we cannot do this on our own, but slowly, step by step, and we fall, and we get back up, and we fall, and we get back up, and try again. And this is the normal path. So it's awesome if you had a conversion in one second, and your life changed, and you were never the same. That's awesome. But for most other Christians, most people, it's gradual. Ordinary purification and healing, whether of the body or soul, are accomplished by little and little, progressing slowly and often hardly at all. The angels who ascended descent on Jacob's ladder had wings, yet they flew not, but trod the successive steps of the ladder. We may compare our soul rising from sin to holiness to the dawn which, as it rises, does not at once dispel darkness, but advances gradually. 
It is an old saying that the slow cure is a certain cure. Spiritual diseases like those of the body come mounted and at full speed they return on foot and creeping. We must be patient and courageous. It is sad to see those who, finding their attempts after the devout life hindered by various infirmities, begin to grow uneasy, to fret, to be disheartened, almost ready to yield to the temptation of forsaking their aim and falling back. But on the other hand, the danger is great, and who, at the very outset, persuade themselves that their imperfections are purified, at once esteem themselves perfected, and seek to fly without wings. Truly, my daughter, having too soon cast aside the physician's care, they are in a great danger of a relapse. So a lot of people who think they have broken, um, for example, a problem in virtue, for example, their master the anger, and then they're filled with pride and thinking, now I got it, and I'm never going to fall again. And then such a temptation comes, and they fall such into anger that they say, oh, everything that I've experienced must be fake. I must not have any advancement. And I just they, they give up. They leave it behind. And that's not the way. Don't be proud if you have overcome something. You will be tested and temptation will come again and you will fall and you may rise up because see, it's only failure if you fall and you keep on laying there and you give up. It's actually progress. If you fall, you learn, you get up, and you try again. And if you do have to do this your entire life, then that is your cross. Christ tells us to carry our cross, and this might be your cross, and that's okay. As long as you get up and you try again. Arise not until the light cometh, says the prophet. Rise not till ye have rested. And he himself practices this lesson, and having been already washed and cleansed, prays that he may be washed more thoroughly. The discipline of purification can and must cease only with our life. Therefore, be not discouraged by infirmities. Our perfection consists in struggling against them, which we cannot do unless we perceive them. Neither can we conquer unless we come into collision with them. So if we don't notice that we have an anger problem, we might not be able to work on it. So, and if we don't collide with, for example, unfriendly people, and we only have beautiful, kind people, we may never notice that we need patience, we need kindness, we need love, we need anger management. We might not never know. So actually, if we collide with unfriendly people, we can practice and grow in virtues instead of giving up and saying, oh, I'm never going to conquer this. Oh, yes, you can get better. Victory does not lie in ignoring our infirmities, but in resisting them. Therefore, being grieved by them is not consenting to them. Our humility is at times tested by the wounds which we receive in our spiritual combat. But we are never conquered unless we lose our courage or our life. And our spiritual life can be extinguished only by mortal sins, not by imperfections and venial sins. Therefore, we have the more need to watch that these do not destroy our courage. Now, it talks about venial sin and mortal sin. Um, there's a distinction. So venial sin is, for example, a sin that you fall into. For example, somebody really unkind just fussed at you and you turned around and you lost your temper. That's venial sin. It's a sin. It's a sin not to be kind and patient. But it, it came out of affection and you didn't plan it. Mortal sin is being planned. You planned it. You planned to... Um, rob a bank. You planned on um, fussing at that person. Maybe you even prepared an entire speech of fussing at a person and making them down. Maybe you rehearsed in anger how you're going to re react in not a nice and kindly way. So everything that's mortal is really 
planned out. You wanted to do it. And not only in your mind, and then you let go of it and ask God of forgiveness, but you actually went through with it. Therefore, we have the more need to watch that these do not destroy our courage. Deliver me, O Lord, said David, from cowardice and faint-heartedness. It is a fearable feature of this war that so long as we will fight, we must be victorious. So, basically, don't give up. Don't give up. Just don't give up. As long as you get up and you have the breath and you can go again and just learn from it and become better, it's victorious. You went a step ahead. You will only fall this many times. You can overcome. And yes, your temptations might grow to a higher level. But that also means that your virtue will grow. So sometimes when, <laughs> uh, sometimes when, for example, you used to get angry and now you can manage, but now comes a whole other temptation and you lose your temper again. That doesn't mean you have lost. It means you have learned and you are at now at a higher level and you are tempted at a higher level. And so it means that you will grow even further once you have overcome this again. Or patience. Maybe you can stay patient in this one thing that you used to lose your temper, but now you cannot keep your patience or your endurance at another thing. And it's step by step by step by step. God never gives us so much that we cannot handle it. He wrote this in his scriptures. So we can overcome and we can grow as long as you don't give up. You pray to God for help. You try to find a spiritual guide and a friend that will help you and you can converse with. I wish you a beautiful, wonderful, blessed day. And I hope you learned a lot. God bless you. Be peace be with you. Till next time.